Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Adrian and today we are doing a book review. This is a book review for The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buhlman. This is a book that I finished a couple of weeks ago um, during September and is a epic fantasy, the first book of a projected trilogy. Um, and yeah, let's jump straight in with a little bit of a quick synopsis. So, Kinchna Shanak, that's our main character, owes the Takers Guild a small fortune for his education as a thief, which includes, but is not limited to, lockpicking, knife fighting, wall scaling, fall breaking, lie weaving, trap making, plus a few small magics. His debt has driven him to lie in wait by an old forest road, planning to rob the next traveller to cross his path. But today, Kinchna Shanak has picked the wrong mark. Galva is a knight, a survivor of the brutal goblin wars, and handmaiden of the goddess of death. She is searching for her queen, missing since a distant northern city fell to giants. Unsuccessful in his robbery and lucky to escape with his life, Kinch now finds his fate entangled with Galvas. Common enemies and uncommon dangers force thief and knight on an epic journey. Um, and I think that's actually a pretty good synopsis. I don't often love synopsises. You see I don't often read them on this channel. I'll often give you my own quick thoughts of a synopsis but that synopsis I thought actually summed up the setup of this book really rather well. So this is a first person perspective book following Kinch. Early in this book I feel your enjoyment will ride largely on the authorial voice and the, the voice of your narrator Kinch. Um, as I said, it's first person and we very much hear his thoughts. He's an amusing character, or he's certainly meant to be an amusing character. In lots of ways, he is rather vulgar as well. And actually, I was a little bit torn on him initially. Um, the first three or four chapters, I thought he was kind of amusing, but I didn't really like him. Um, actually, as it developed, as I got through those next few chapters after that, I decided I actually did quite like Kinch as a main character, as a point of view character. Um, I would not like to be friends with him in real life, but he is a very interesting um, character. He has a very unique um, voice and viewpoint, and I do think that makes for an interesting um, perspective to view this novel from. This is very much um, following Kinch who is a thief and he is very much not a fighter, he is definitely a rogue in that sense. He does have access to a little bit of magic but not much um, and he is sort of thrust into this plot and thrust into this mission um, due to his large debt that he owes the Takers Guild who trained him to be a thief. Um, the other main character who we see lots of is Galva. She is a knight with a um, bird companion and she is, um, yeah, she's basically uh, a servant of the goddess of death as well. She's a very interesting character, very much chalk and cheese with um, Kinch, but she is very much a sort of dark paladin almost. She's yeah, a black guard, however you describe that, whether D&D &D terms you want to put on that or other fantasy terms, she's very much a dark paladin um, in lots of ways. Um, this is a group of characters who make sense to be rather morally grey as a thief and then a paladin of the goddess of death. There is not a shining white knight going on here. There is not a great good versus evil divide happening. This is very much more morally grey as fantasy goes. Once we get beyond that narrative voice of Kinch, once we get more into the plot, there's a lot of other things going on. And one of the big things that surprised me about this book is how much I love the world building. I wasn't really expecting um, in this first person point of view, light-hearted fantasy romp to really, really love the world building. Um, and I think Christopher Buhlman does a great job with it. Now there are subtle things that are going on here in the world building, but I think they serve a really good purpose. So the goblins are the main threat. They are the threat that has been a threat for humanity here for decades. Um, we are at a bit of a lull in the goblin wars. Um, there's a peace treaty being signed and actually I really like that the goblins, or the, I think they call them the ankle biters, um, are a, a, a real actual force uh, in this world. I love that they're not just a comedic, easy to beat villain, but they are actually the big threat to humanity. Um, and they have actually had to um, give them a peace treaty and sort of 
level out the playing field and say that's enough we can't continue to fight this war and i love that one of the big um, outcomes of the goblin war was actually the death um, the magical death of a large percentage not a lot of almost all of humanity's horses and that has some impact on the the plot but actually is a really interesting world building detail that horses are just so 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 rare in this world and i think a little change like that can do a lot of heavy lifting on making this world feel different and interesting um, in a very easy simple way and i think that was done very well um, and the plot kicks off as the synopsis said when a giant attack um, happens to the north and that's where kinch and is sent to try and work out what's going on and sort of protect the takers guild's interests in that area all in all, I think Christopher Buhlman does a very good job translating over to fantasy here as an author. Um, he is known as an author in other genres, but this is his first go at fantasy, and I really liked it. I think so much of your enjoyment of this will depend on how much you like Kinch, whether the humour lands for you as well, which it didn't initially for me, but definitely got better throughout the book. Um, and whether you like the relationships that are built between him and Galva and the rest of the cast. I think that's a big thing here, yeah? Do you enjoy those relationships? Do you enjoy how they build and they grow? Do you enjoy the characters individually? Um, and do you think it is funny? Because it is very much meant to be, if not a full-on comedy, is very much meant to be light-hearted. And if that doesn't land for you, it might be more of a struggle. In my review on Goodreads, I did um, say that this is probably for fans of Nicholas Ames, um, who, people who've loved Kings of the Wild. This is definitely a book that I would recommend having a look at. Klaus, don't even bother. You're not going to like it, I don't think. Um, and I do think that there is a real uh, comedic side to this, but I don't think that's its strength. I think a bit like the end of Kings of the Wild, I think this actually does pack a relatively emotional punch towards the end and that's what i love in my slightly comedic fantasies i love the humor i love the fun and the banter and then i love when actually the author is able to introduce serious elements that actually matter um, and that actually make me feel something for these characters other than wanting to laugh at or with them um, and that's something i would say that christopher Wilman does very well um, giving us a more um, impactful, particularly emotionally impactful, ending towards this book. And I think that he does that very, very well. And I think it transitions this book well from amusing and fun and lighthearted to a book that I actually really care about. And I actually think I do very much want to read book two and three when they come out. Like I said, I don't think this is a book for you if you want a big multi-POV cast. This is not a book for you if you want huge epic storylines huge massive world ending plot points especially in the first book um, this is not for you if you don't think kinch is very funny if you don't like some vulgarity in your humor it's not awful but there are definitely some vulgar moments early on that you just have to get through um, but all in all i think that there's a very very solid fantasy debut um, like i said kinch is an interesting character that i like even if I don't really, I, I wouldn't want to be friends with him in real life um, at all. Um, all in all, I would say world building is a massive strength here. Um, and I think that I'm very interested in the world and in the characters of um, Kinch and Galva, probably a lot more so than the plot. The plot was not the driving force here for me. The plot was very much secondary to the character work and to the world building. Um, and that's not something I expected going in, particularly um, talking about the world building. All in all, I gave this book a four and a half star rating. I really liked it. It wasn't quite up in the five star, like going onto my favourites lists, but I can definitely see if it progresses well, if book two and three deliver, this could be a very um, popular and a very enjoyable series for many. And it will definitely be that for me, assuming that we get some good progression through books two and books three. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope it's been informative. I hope you found out if this is a book you might want to pick up or if it's one for you to avoid. Um, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And hopefully I will see you guys again soon.